in spite of the prayers of hundreds of thousands of people, God was not going to heal Kay or make it easy for her. It has been very difficult for her, and yet God has strengthened her character, given her a ministry of helping other people, giving her a testimony, drawing her closer to Him and to people. You have to learn to deal with both the good and the bad of life. Actually, sometimes learning to deal with the good is harder. For instance, this past year, all of a sudden, when the book sold 15 million copies, it made me instantly wealthy. Very wealthy. It also brought a lot of notoriety that I never had to deal with before. I don't think God gives you money or notoriety for your own ego or for you to live a life of ease. So I began to ask God what He wanted me to do with this money, notoriety and influence. He gave me two different passages that helped me decide what to do. 2 Corinthians 9 and Psalm 72. First, in spite of all the money coming in, we would not change our lifestyle one bit. We made no major purchases. Second, about midway through last year, I stopped taking a salary from the church. Third, we set up foundations to fund an initiative we call the Peace Plan. To plant churches, equip leaders, assist poor, care for the sick, and educate the next generation. Fourth, I added up all the church had paid me in the 24 years since I started the church. And I gave it all back. It was liberating to be able to serve God for free. We need to ask ourselves, am I going to live for possessions, popularity? Am I going to be driven by pressures, guilt, bitterness, materialism? Or am I going to be driven by God's purposes for my life? When I get up in the morning, I sit on the side of my bed and say, God, if I don't get anything else done today, I want to know you more and love you better. God didn't put me on earth just to fulfill a to-do list. He's more interested in what I am than what I do. That's why we're called human beings, not human doings. Now, before I go to Scripture, I want to ask you what you thought of that dude. Man, think about it. Did I read it clear enough? All the great, good things it sounds like is going on. I didn't know. One time he mentioned Jesus, that Jesus is name, mm -hmm. and it was why I've, yeah. I, I, I've done this and I've done that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was I, me. Mean. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not I, I, I did this, mm -hmm. I did that. And... Can you tell that? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. It sounds real good, but, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. but you got to really listen to it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Because most i say almost 85% of the church has been deceived by this man. Oh, yeah. The purpose-driven life. Mm -hmm. Purpose for 40 days of purpose. And his wife had cancer, and he gave all the money back. Oh, yeah. But you know this man? This man also wrote a letter to Islam, apologized to Islam, and calling them brothers in Christ, saying that we serve the same God. He sits on the Council of Foreign Relations. And he has a peace plan, all right. A purpose-driven peace plan is what he calls it. And the purpose-driven peace plan is that we all come together with that kumbaya spirit. That we can serve the same God in harmony. This is a new age theology come from Robert Schuter. Matter of fact, Robert Schuter almost sued him over the purpose-driven life. Which Robert Schuter is a new age guru in California. Crystal Cathedral. Now, it's got nothing to do with the Bible at all. Nope. But this man promotes himself mm -hmm. and makes himself look so good, others are so deceived that they follow him. Yep. And they read his stuff. And the last statement really got to me <clears throat> because most people <clears throat> love that statement. But well, God's not concerned in what I do. He's more concerned in what I am. Go with me to Genesis 4. Back, back to Genesis. Amen. Thank you for Genesis. Go to the beginning where it all started. And let's find out what truth is. So God's not concerned with what you do, but just who you are. So if I am an adulteress, thieving, I mean robbing, cussing, axe murdering, nothing. He's not concerned with that. He's just concerned with who I am. He says we're all children of God. It's another thing Rick says. 
But Jesus says in John chapter 8, says, you are your father the devil, talking to the Pharisees, because mm -hmm. you don't hear my word. Mm -hmm. You don't receive my words, so you're of your father the devil. So there are children, mm -hmm. even though made by God, and inspired by God's light, and come through their mother's womb, that are still of their father the devil, because the spirit in them has rebelled against God. That's right. But he's not concerned with what I do. Well, he was pretty concerned in this. Go to verse 4, chapter 4, verse 4. You got Cain and Abel here. The first two sons of Adam and Eve. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Now Cain brought what he brought for an offering, and Abel brought the firstlings of his flock. Cain brought the, the let's see what he brought. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground, an offering unto the Lord. Go back to verse 4. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Now why would the Lord do that? Why would he have respect to persons in the offerings here? One reason why is because Abel's offering pointed to the Christ. Pointed to Jesus Christ and him crucified. The firstlings of his flock. Flock, the blood had to be shed. He was taught by Adam and his mom Eve that they had to shed the blood. They had to offer up a lamb to point to the lamb to come that would take away the sin of the world. Amen. So he had respect unto Abel's, but Cain did not want to bring that type of offering. Many people twist that and say it's got, got to do with money and, and bringing your first 10% in, which is a lie. And it's got everything to do with Jesus Christ. That whole Bible has to do with Jesus Christ from Genesis Amen. 1 to Revelation Amen. 22. Jesus. So we see Cain wanted to bring his own type of offering, kind of like Rick Warren. You know, there's one offering that we bring that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. Not through Islam, not through Hinduism, not through any other false religion. Not through that perfect rhythm life. No, through universalism. Amen. That's Cain's altar. And there's many thousands of people around Cain's altar. Yep. But Jesus Christ has one. And the one you bring is Christ and crucified, the power of God. That's where your faith is. This is what Abel brought. But Cain was mad. Have you ever had people mad at you oh, yeah. when you tell them Jesus is the only way, my friend? Mm -hmm. You're not getting in any other way. You must confess Christ yep. as Lord Amen. of Lord and King of Kings. Mm -hmm. He is the Lord. Hey, come on. <laughs> Have you ever had people mad? Mm -hmm. Oh, they got Cain's spirit in them. They're around Cain's altar. So he was very angry. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Cain, 